So we see the the uh, EVP is attacking Darby and the Stings a week or two ago, and then Darby and Sting do a promo. And I will I don't know where they were, but there's a spooky door there. They were standing in front they of. They were at Sting's house. Excuse me. They were at Sting's Sting, house. Sting's house is a spooky. All right. Well, <laughs> I don't know, but that's where this was filmed. Okay. So Darby is talking about how <laughs> being close to the end, like he's the one retiring, which eh, being close to the end changes your perspective. He shares some very old photos of Wolfpack Sting posing with his sons, Garrett and Steven. The children in this photo are about the same age as the Bucks kids now. This is Sting's flesh and blood. The only thing that matters at the end is family. And Sting slowly enters the picture and he agrees. He says he's been in wrestling a long, long time. But nobody has ever messed with his flesh and blood until you, Bucks. He reveals, in fact, that seven days ago his father passed away. He was like a hero to me, taught him the right way to do things, made him think about his own mortality. I used to think I was so invincible. Sometimes I still feel that way. But time catches up with everyone, with everyone and it caught me for sure. I'm not invincible. But everything I have left in me... I'm bringing a revolution, and it's going to meet you face to face, you bucks. You have a fight on your hands, the fight of your life. Ruled! It's ruled. This promo was so awesome, but at the same time, I felt so bad for Sting. That sucks, yes. It's all true. You know, that's why he wasn't there last week when they did that follow-up with Darby. And he's, you know, he's got other things going on in his life that aren't great right now. And it's just a lot of things happening right when he's supposed to be celebrating the end of his career. So I wish the best for him. It's, uh, you know, it it sucks, but at the same time, it's like he used that to cut the promo of a lifetime here. Yeah. It was everything they needed for this match. You know, they, they brought up the kids. I mean, it was just, this was the best thing. It was so great. And uh, all the best to Sting. Hopefully uh, things are a little bit smoother sailing heading into his final match. So speaking of promo of a lifetime, where did this Wardlow come from? Holy crap. Technically, Shivani interviews him, although the Wardlow immediately kicks Shivani out of the ring. He has been pissed for a long time. A few years ago, there were thousands of people chanting his name like we haven't seen in decades. He was the next big thing, but the rocket on his back was upside down because he was launched in the ground and screwed over and over again. I am the one AEW original megastar. I should have been a champion a long time ago, but I had never even had a title match. And the people back there need to be fired and thrown in jail for that fact. The guy who called himself the best in the world, the real world champion, I beat his ass like nobody before. His body's still falling apart because of me. Guy who says he's better than you when you know it. I squashed him like an insect like nobody ever has. The current champion, Samoa Joe, I choked his ass out. I beat him too. And big shiny titles and custom suits look better on me than they do on him. I am the uncrowned king of AEW. It is time I eat like one. I am everything a world champion is supposed to be. The baddest son of a bitch to lace up a pair of boots. And nobody can stop me. Anyone who wants to get in my way, this is no longer wrestling. This is war. And his music plays, and he was so awesome. And I, when this whole uh, Undisputed Kingdom formed, Adam Cole did say Wardlow was going to challenge for the world title down the line, but it wasn't time yet. I guess it's time now, because Wardlow has just been doing squash matches since December, and uh, just treading water, and I guess he's ready to swim. No longer treading water, <laughs> because he was on fire. Yeah, you know, the first part of this promo, I was fixing to really not like it. Because you got a guy who never, ever loses. All he does is destroy people. And he's sitting there complaining that the rocket was trapped to him upside down and he was sent to the ground. And I was like, brother, what are you talking about here? But when he finally got to the point of, I have never got a world championship match. And this is what I did to CM Punk. This is what I did to MJF. This is what I did to your current champion. God damn it, I want my fucking title shot. And by the end, I thought, this is the best Wardlow promo I've ever heard. And, you know, for a long time, Wardlow looks great. Fans like his short matches. But, you know, what else What else are you bringing to the table here? Like, can you do a long grade match? Can you cut a great promo? 
You know, there's a lot of questions. Well, we now know that with the right material, he can sure fucking cut a great promo. So I do think that probably at some point coming up, he is going to get that first title shot. I also think that, I mean, man, he mentioned MGF a lot. I don't know if MGF is back like imminently, yeah, but yeah. it sure felt from watching this like he's going to be back imminently. I don't think they're going to do MGF and Wardlow at the pay-per-view. That seems awfully rushed. Plus, you probably end up beating Wardlow. Yeah, no, I, I, I don't know. I don't know that he mentioned MGF any more than he mentioned CM Punk, and they're certainly not doing CM Punk and Wardlow at the pay-per-view. So well, no. that's uh, still down the line, I think. Regardless, I don't, like I say, you, you this was for sure the best promo of his career. Maybe I'm forgetting something. It's been a while. I don't remember any other very good ones. He came out there and said, I'm big and battle, beat people up, and that's what he would do. But the actual promo itself was nothing special. This was awesome. We see the Bang Bang Scissor Gang winning on Rampage. And if you watch that match, there was one point where uh, Jay White was on the apron. And as Billy Gunn was running the ropes, he knocked him off. So they did do a promo afterwards, and Billy begins by apologizing. And they didn't even show this, by the way. In, in the video package, they did not show Billy Gunn knocking him off the apron. But Billy does apologize to Jay White for doing that. He's trying to reunite with his kids, and they're they're going back and forth. And so as a reunion, Jay proposes a trio's match for probably Rampage, I guess, for uh, Billy Gunn, Colton Gunn, and himself, Jay White, as a trio's team. No Austin Gunn. But that's uh, apparently that's on Rampage this week. Yeah, we're still uh, we're still here in the part of the story where it's like, the fuck did you guys get for teaming up together? Like, you've won one twelve man tag. Yeah, are there are there twelve man titles? I'm I'm unaware. I of, don't know. What is this whole thing? You know, you've already talked about how much you have titles. Like, what are we doing here? I still don't have an answer. I don't, They're I don't just have it. together, and I presume that the heels are going to turn on the baby faces imminently. You know, the only reason I can think of not to do that is if this shirt is selling particularly well, they may drag it out. But yeah, can uh, wait a month. Yeah. Will Osprey hype video to announce he will be at All In in London in August. Like, well, Jesus, I hope we don't have to wait that long. And then thankfully, they announced he will also be on Dynamite next Wednesday night. And also at Revolution, they very casually announce Wardlow will be in something called Meat Madness. We yes. Were we were later than Will Hobbs is also involved in this somehow. It sounds I, like a, a monster mash battle royal. A Haas battle royal. I'm sure the the the, yeah. the Iron Savages will be in there. Uh, sure. Maybe Tager and Kill Switch. They don't have a ton of giants in this company, but uh, they just take the ones they have and put them in a, a a mini maxi battle royal. Speaking of which, Renee interviews the Don Callis family about Takeshita and Will Osprey. Callis repeats that Osprey and Takeshita are the two best wrestlers in the world, with Will Hobbs standing right next to him. I am on my way in the Don Callis family jet to pick Osprey up personally from the United Kingdom. Hobbs is going to hurt a lot of people in Meat Madness. And don't forget Sammy Guevara, you little cuck. And he relished. <laughs> and the crowd gasped when he, he called him a little cuck. Relished saying that word on an, uh, TNT here. We got a score to settle. I'm keeping an eye on you. I think he relished saying little cuck and also meat madness. <laughs> it's both fun to say when you think about it. You have the Peacock app, Granny. It tells me that I'm not on it anymore. Well, you better start logging in because I've been paying for it every month. I don't care anyway. I don't like it. Use Peacock or I'm going to stop paying for it. You can if you want to. Start from 1929. Who was president? Okay. Who was I'll... president when I was alive? That was Donald late. Trump. Shut up. Well, let me do it. Okay. <laughs> Up till 1933, it was Herbert Hoover. Hmm. Herbert Hoover. Yeah, and he was uh, 50, 50 uh, he was our 31st president. <laughs> hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click join today and don't miss out.